Well, if you've been in the market for a new ute this year, you've been spoilt for choice. So far, all the major players are either all new or heavily refreshed. So far, we've had the Nissan Navara, Mitsubishi Triton, and most recently the Ford Ranger. And the latest is this, the Mazda BT50. So, let's see if the small revisions Mazda has made to this car are enough to keep it ahead of the pack. The Japanese brand has hit a sweet spot with its regular passenger car range, building a stylish family of hatches, sedans and SUVs under its Kodo design theme. Almost every one of them is among the most popular in its class. But the BT50 hasn't quite hit the sweet spot with the tradies, as its more organic style is seen as a bit soft for a tough-as-nails truck. So, this latest update is centred more around addressing its design, with a new-look front bumper, revised tail lights, and a few more toys in the cabin, including an updated infotainment system in Topline XTR and GT models that comes with sat-nav and a reversing camera as standard. Like before, the Mazda BT50's interior is quite car-like for this class. The biggest upgrade to this new model is this, the centre console, which has moved from a fairly button-laden audio system with a very small screen in the top dash there to an integrated system here with sat-nav that even includes HEMA maps. So even if you're well off the beaten track, you can still check to see where you are. And moving the screen away from here also creates a handy little binnacle for small item storage. In the grand scheme of things, the changes are fairly minor to the BT50 and really equate to some styling upgrades that include new headlights that make it a little less polarizing at the front, although not on this car you'd be able to tell. It's wearing a huge, massive bull bar with some big spotlights on it. There are also new tail lights at the back, and because of that, it doesn't change the character of the BT50 in terms of how it drives. Entry-level, single-cab, two-wheel drive models of the BT50 have a 2.2-litre four-cylinder turbo diesel, but the majority of the 23 different variants on offer, all the freestyle cab and dual cab models, are powered by a 3.2-litre five-cylinder that produces 147 kilowatts at 3,000 RPM and 470 newton metres between 1750 and 2500 RPM. The 3.2-litre five-cylinder turbo diesel engine is still really strong, but like a turbo diesel engine, particularly in this class, it still is rather noisy and sounds pretty agricultural when you get into it. It works well with the automatic gearbox, which is quite intuitive in giving you the power when you need it and very smooth in its shifts. Now the steering is quite well weighted and doesn't have that truck-like characteristic that you would expect from a pickup like this. In fact, it is really easy to use in everyday situations. And like a Swiss Army knife, this car has the ability to tackle anything. Around town it's actually quite easy to drive, the suspension is a little agricultural in the way that it deals with potholes, bumps and as you'd expect for a big heavy car that sits quite tall off the ground, it does lean through corners. The fact that it's also got dual purpose tyres on it means there's not a lot of grip in slippery conditions like it is today. While this isn't the perfect family car, I can see its appeal. It does have the flexibility to haul a workload during the week and then become a family truckster on the weekend. With 3,500 kilo brake towing capacity, it can easily pull a boat or a horse float, and there's enough space in the back for a modern family to be relatively comfortable. With so many variants on offer, prices for the BT50 range start at $25,750 plus on-road costs for the most basic single cab 4x2 in base model XT trim, and go all the way up to $53,790 plus on-road costs for the flagship dual cab 4x4 GT. The automatic gearbox is around a $2,000 option on all models and a reverse camera can be fitted to those that don't come with it as standard for $820. While the updates to the Mazda BT50 are not as significant as its rivals, it certainly remains a strong contender in this popular class. It does, however, have one more test to face. Can it defend its car of the year crown in the ute category? That we will find out in a couple of months.